Hau deu! Hi, I'm Chris. Welcome to King Bespoke Creations. How are you doing? Now then, in this video, we're going to take this big slab of a thing, okay, and use the big power router and some templates that we've got um, and use it on the guitar to make it look a little bit more like a guitar. We're going to have parts that look like an old Strat and parts that look like angel wings. Oh, it's exciting, it's great, I love it. Uh, but today it's gonna to be lots of big noisy power outers. Um, I like hand tools, genuinely, because they're lovely and quiet and clean and lovely. But today it's the big monster stuff. That's what we've got today. Now then, we're gonna be using these templates, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit through the video. I made these templates um, quite a while ago, uh, but we'll go through and talk about maybe a few of your options. If you've not done a guitar build before, um, this could be the easy way to go through. Uh, if you want to do more than just buy a kit and put it together. Okay, right, let's tuck in then. Okay, so before we even use the template, uh, we need to mark off which sections of this I'm actually gonna go around with the template. So I'm marking off these very, very definite areas of where the, the router wants to stop before there. And again, at this bottom section here, we've got these two marks. So it's only that little bit that the, the template's really gonna come into play for this. Come on, you all know this trick, right? Masking tape and super glue. I'm sure you do. If Ben Crow's dying legacy is just this, and I say he's succeeded in life. Thank you, Mr. Crow. Now, I mentioned earlier on that I made these templates um, literally by drawing round an original body and being really risky and using the router to copy these holes out. Could have gone horribly wrong, but thankfully it didn't. Um, even with the, the neck joint pretty much doing the same thing, uh, but actually making that neck pocket fit the neck rather than copied off the body. Um, so we've actually ended up with a better fitting neck because of that. Um, an awful lot of work and, and scary parts went into those. I think in future I'll just be buying um, template kits. They're not very expensive so for 45, 50 pounds, something like that, you can get a template kit which gives you all the body uh, templates and the neck templates and all the cavities as well. Um, and I think I'll be investing in a few of those to get some different shapes as we go through. I'll click a link in the description down below so you can have a look at those. Um, I think they're going to be a really good way to, to move forward to start making your own guitars instead of just buying a kit next time. Time for some routing then. Now you may be asking, Chris, how do I know how deep to make my cavities? Well, to be honest, I go off the old body. That's one of the advantage of getting either a kit or a second hand guitar and replacing the body is we've got something to measure off. Now you can see on this guitar, this is the guitar body that came off the second hand guitar we're gonna use. And you can see these nice big red uh, sections underneath where all the pickups are gonna go. So there we can measure how deep that cavity is, knowing that's going to work well for what we need it for. So what we've got with this body is I carved um, a mountain lake seam into this body. Uh, this is what actually came off the Squire originally. Um, if you want it, put a message in. I'm sure we can get a very nice price for it. Um, yeah, so that it's good to have something to measure off is what we're trying to get to. That's the kind of point we're rambling on at. not got us too far away. Uh, we haven't gone down to full depth in one go, just don't ever do that, try and do it in increments. Because we're taking so much off I could do a decent amount straight away, 
um, but I do need to go down a little bit more um, I've not only got the kind of 19 mil is the depth of the, the recess that we need for the pickup cavity but I've also got the what, 5 mil or so of wing that I need to recess as well so this needs to go down well a little bit more than that what's that 24 mil I'm good at maths me honest the English is more better at all I don't like machines but they are a necessary evil sometimes and I've got to say this one this Von Haus um, is an absolute bargain I've been really impressed with this router I've got to say I haven't had it too long but for 65 pounds um, the, the stuff that this has got on is unreal the depth control is fantastic um, it's got an adaption so you can put your Hoover port in the back for dust collection and the best thing I found on this is it's got a soft start to it. So it doesn't jar as soon as you turn it on. So if you're in the market for a new router, I would definitely check this one out. I'll put a link in the description so you can check it out for yourself. Um, definitely worth the investment, I think, uh, for stuff like this. Really tricky to do by hand. But I can't wait to get back to my chisels. Now we can use this edge that we got through. Uh, we can actually use then the, the bearing on the router on that to cut the rest of it. So we can see I've gone around here a few times. I've actually maxed out the router bit that I've got. I can't get any more depth out of it. Um, so we'll switch to one of these router bits instead where the bearings at the end rather than at the collar. Um, and we'll just flip the guitar upside down and come at it from the bottom side instead. Right, so before we can cut out this channel on the main body of the guitar to make the wings effectively stand proud, we need to trim our pick guard because basically we're going to inlay this in between our wings so it looks like the wings will overlap so what we need to do is cut out this section on here all the way around these wing sections that we've drawn so we can lift this off place that on top of the pick guard and trim the edge of the pick guard to suit So just a tiny little bit of print stick, just where I think those edges are going to be. That will come off, I mean it's, it's the filthiest thing anyway, but hey, it's supposed to be. Uh, right, so we just need to stick this on as accurately as we can. Right, now I'm not sure whether this is going to be the best technique of either using this to try and cut the plastic or whether the bandsaw or the super skinny blade might work better. I'm a little bit worried that the plastic might just crack so I'm going to try up here first and just see. It's not bad. But that soft plastic, actually, I think with each pull, can veer slightly. So I'm not keen on that. I'll try the bandsaw for you, see if that's any better. Well, I bet you've never seen a pick guard like that before. 
and just tidy up that lower edge best we can. Right, so it's time to place the pick guard so we can scribe around these edges and then flow them into where the feathers are going to be. Uh, you'll see I've cut the neck pocket out exactly the same technique as doing these that we did earlier. Um, I just wanted to get that done while we had this big flat surface before we start taking 5mm off a, a channel in the middle. Um, it also should give us a, a better place for the pick guard itself to fit. So does that go in there? Yes it does. Don't worry again this top's going to go down 5mm if we're all screaming it's too low. It isn't. Uh, right, well that's a better fit than the Squire guitar it came off. So that's nice. Uh, right, so we can put that there. Actually, that slots on there. Does everything line up? Yes, it does. I'm making sure that I've got, a, I've got a centre line on this pick guard just to make sure I've got a bit of room to play. Pull it away from the neck a smidge. Right, so on those two holes here, I'm gonna put little markers in there with the diddly do. What's this called? Finger me jig. What you call? Uh, yeah, there we go. So they can go there. Then I can just put a little pre-drill in there and actually screw that down while I've inscribed around there with the knife. down the pick guard and we've scribed around that I need to do the same now along the very edges of the feathers uh, so I know where can be cut down on all sides so we've got the raised sections the flat bit underneath um, and then the recessed sections for well as a standard guitar would have So we've marked off all the edges, so I need to take off all of this section inside of here. So what I'm doing at the minute, before I start sanding off all of this area, which will need to be done pretty good, uh, before I then stain this and then start carving this lot, I've got to make sure that the edges are good though, so if I'm going to sand this flat it needs to be sanded up to the edges of the wings, so I'm making sure that this pick guard, see that just needs a little bit of filing there, but that's a lovely fit in there at the moment, it needs to go down a little bit further but it's getting there, just realise that screw head there could become a bit of an issue, I might have to chop a screw in half and make that fit in there. Um, but yeah, it's going quite well. So that's this side pretty much fitted. That side needs now trimming to make sure that they can all fit flush inside as well. And then we can do the really boring bit of all that sanding. Right then, well, that's got us to a point, hasn't it? Uh, so hopefully you can start to see now what I've, what I've kind of got in my head if you haven't already. Uh, so we definitely have these raised sections through here now uh, which we can carve into wings this lowered area will be the original strap body uh, which in the next video uh, we're going to be staining that spraying it lacquering it scratching it doing all those things to that original body um, so that that's kind of finished if you like and then we'll start carving the wings after that um, that way, if I slip with a chisel, it doesn't matter because it's only going to make another scratch that we want anyway. Hurrah! Um, so yeah, so we've accomplished quite a lot today. Now I've still got a bit of work to do because I need to do all of that 
on the back still as well. So I've got the, the cavity to route out in the back for the springs, for the tremolo, um, and then do the same kind of draw out edges of wings to sort that out as well. If you're liking what you're seeing so far, make sure you click that subscribe button, smash the like button for me. If you've got a comment, stick it down below. Uh, check out the other videos that we've got, uh, previous videos up here, playlist down there that you're gonna love. And uh, well, sharpen your tools, see you soon, and God bless. Mm -hmm.